Alright, this is Monster Restore 91, and today I'm going to do an oil change on a 2022 Chevy Malibu 1.5 liter turbo. As you can see, we have to change the oil. It's 29%. So, right now we're going to do the oil change. And we're going to lift up this vehicle. You gotta change the oil and the oil filter. And I'm gonna show you guys how to reset the oil lamp. But for right now, we're gonna start doing the oil change. Okay, this is the things you need. You need a 3 8 socket, 3 8 ratchet, and some rubber pads so you could lift up the vehicle. And it goes on the jack stands there right there so you won't damage the pinch weld under the vehicle and to clean up your hands with this fast orange hand washer hand cleaner and an oil filter removal tool a funnel and a rubber pad so you could put it on the jack and lift so you won't damage the pinch well oil filter and oil, brand new oil. And I also like to use um whiteout so I can mark how much I had to add on the vehicle right there. I put white out on the left side right here. So I believe this vehicle it takes like 4.2 liters, I believe. So I marked it right here from the previous um oil and I did the oil change so this is how much I put like just below the line 4.2 quarts so this is the things you need all this so let's get going oh and also I forgot to mention you have to use um a jack so you could lift up the vehicle and remember to use a pad so let's get going. You will also need a recovery tank for the oil. I forgot to mention. Make sure the lid is off. When the oil starts falling in here. So this is where you put the oil filter. The used one. So it could start dripping and it just goes into the hole. So this pan comes in handy. So I'm going to start lifting the vehicle right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put one of these. So, um, large rubber pad, jack rubber pad. So you just put it right here, right here. You see the pinch well right here? So you can see the pinch well right here. This is where I'm gonna be lifting it. So, this one is good so you won't, so you won't damage the pinch well because some tire shops or mechanic shops they use a bare metal and you could damage the pinch well then you're not gonna know how to lift up the vehicle so this comes very handy so I'm gonna lift up the vehicle right now okay so this is where I'm gonna lower down the vehicle right here and this pinch well you could see like a opening right there so it's gonna land on the rubber pad, on the red one. And look at how I lift it up right here in the pinch well. So this rubber pad is, comes in handy, so like I said, you don't wanna bend this pinch well. So now I'm gonna lower it down, and I'm gonna do the, exactly the same thing on the other side, on the passenger side. Also, you could put a... Um, a well chalk so it could um so the car won't roll back you could put uh the emergency brake but i just do it like this i'm not in a hill so i still put it on just for safety safety reasons so right there so it could roll back so right there my vehicle is already lifted right here the passenger, I mean on the driver's side. 
right here in the passenger side. So it's already lifted since I don't have cement. I had to use a piece of wood. Never use cinder block because cinder block could break, could crack, and it, a car could fall on you. So it's very dangerous. Like this is the most safest way to do it. That's how I was taught in the mechanic class to always use wood, never cinder block. So now what I'm gonna do is shake the bumper. Never do it in the hood because you could bend the hood. So always shake it. And if it doesn't shake, it means that it's already it's already solid and it's ready to go. So. Like I said, if it doesn't shake, it's safe to go in there, to go under. So now I'm going to start losing the bolt from the oil. Okay, now we're under the car, the vehicle. Since I know it's safe and it's solid, I lift it all good. So now I put um, white out right there between the two numbers. I don't know if you could see it, five and... Eight, right there I know usually people say oh you should torque it to a specific uh, foot pounds but me I don't like to do that because it's too hard sometimes sometimes people over tighten it in shops or in dealerships so I like to do it this way I put on a little bit on the bolt on the oil bolt and right here on the oil pan so I know I could I need to stop right here. Don't over tighten it, don't over losing it. Don't have it loose or over tighten it. So I like to do it this way. I've done it a bunch of times and I haven't had any issues, any oil leaks, so So this is the only the only method I've been using when it comes to losing the oil bolt. So what are we gonna do right now? We're gonna put on a 15 millimeter. The 15 millimeter socket, 3 8. Never use a half inch, always use a 3 8. And we're gonna loosen it right now. We're gonna start losing it. So remember, it's always counterclockwise when losing it. See? It wasn't too hard to loosen it. I only use one hand, so. Like I said, don't over tighten it and don't know, don't leave it loose. Just line it up on the whiteout where I marked it. So now I'm gonna get the the pan ready, the recovery tank from the oil, so we could so we could start draining it. So I'm gonna start draining it. Make sure this the cap is off and this little thing has to be up so I'm gonna get ready to to drain the oil just get ready because you don't want to get dirty so get ready with the recovery tank so you don't want oil to be splashing on you so or falling on the floor or your beautiful driveway so always have this recovery tank ready with the caps off so I'm gonna loosen it more quicker so it could speed up the process forgot to use my my gloves so I'm gonna put on my gloves right now alright now I'm gonna I'll put on my gloves so these are used gloves so I don't really care if I get them dirty cause I'm gonna throw them away anyways so right there, see the oil is black. I'm already draining it, so so I could speed up the process. So I know I, I knew I had to I had to add a new oil change. Make sure the seal is right there on the drain bolt. Sometimes it might get stuck in the oil pan, so make sure it has the seal right there, the washer. So right now I'm just waiting for it to drain completely. And after that, we're gonna we're gonna put back the bolt and line it up, like I said, with the whiteout right there where you see it right here. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna see. 
And once we put on the bolt, it's time to loosen the oil filter. And after we're done tightening everything that is tight, well, the drain bolt and the oil filter, it's time to fill up the, the oil. And I'm gonna show you again how to mark where you have to fill. You don't wanna overfill this car, so I marked it where it had to be from the previous tank that I did the oil change. So, yeah, I'm going to show you right now how to fill it up because you don't want to overfill it. Because I believe this vehicle holds 4.2 4 quarts of oil. So, we're going to be doing that right now. I'll show you guys once it starts draining and once we remove the oil filter. So now I start it stopped dripping a lot. So I'm gonna start cleaning it a little bit. I already cleaned up the drain plug, the oil drain plug. So I'm gonna put it back in. Make sure you put it in correctly. You don't want to cross thread it, so I know it's going in perfectly. So right now we're just going to clean it and just wait a little bit more so it could stop draining. So we could start losing the oil filter. Alright, I already tightened the bolt, like I say. I match it up with the white out as you can see there's no oil drips in any place so I don't know like I said I don't like to torque it I don't like to torque it because I could I could strip the bolt or I could mess up the bolt and it won't tighten no more so I just do it right here just do it right here the 5 and the 8 so I just line it up and I don't over tighten it I just tighten it a little bit but not a lot just because like I said you don't want to strip the oil pan so just try to at least line it up you'll feel it like once it gets a little bit you start feeling a little bit hard so don't, you don't have also you don't want to have it too loose so just try to line it up as best as you can I already done this before so I know it works, like I haven't had any issues, like I said, no oil drips or anything. So now it's gonna be time to loosen the oil filter. All right now, so now I'm gonna loosen the oil filter. I usually like to use this tool because you could just get it from here. It could be kind of hard to put it in there, but because it doesn't, like it, you can see like it hits right here. So I always try to do my best I can. So I could loosen it with this oil filter remover tool. This one. And it's adjustable as you can see. You could adjust it, it could slide more to make it more bigger. So right now I'm going to try to loosen it. And as remember, it's always counterclockwise. This side clockwise and to tighten it clockwise so I'm gonna do it right now so I got it to loosen already as you could see it was a little bit challenging I know there's other special tools for this but I managed to get it out see it's already loosened counterclockwise Like I said, get ready with the oil pan. So once it starts dripping, you might want to have gloves. Because you're going to get your hands dirty. So There you go. And then you flip this one. Right here. Where it drains. So 
So now we're just gonna wait until it stops dripping, the same thing as the drain bolt. And we're gonna put on the new oil filter. Make sure there's no rubber seal around here. So this it could get stuck from the old one. So make sure there's no rubber seal right here. There's no rubber seal I could see because I know the oil filter has it. Or else if you see the rubber seal, just remove it. And because then you could have oil leaks if you put on the new one. So make sure the rubber seal is not attached to it. So we're just gonna wait until it starts dripping. We're gonna give it a little clean and onto the new oil filter. So now that I got the used oil filter and the new one, I use I use this brand and Mobile One. I know usually Mobile One is the one that they recommend for the Malibus or the I believe also the Camaros, anything that is Chevy, I believe. So brand new one. I already cleaned I already cleaned the used one so I could like compare it if it's the same. So it's the same size. So I use use it to compare it so I clean the used one. Seems that it's both the same. Make sure it's the same because sometimes the auto parts store give you the wrong one. Make sure that it doesn't have the plastic so you could take it off. So I've seen people putting it with the plastic around here so make sure you take it off. This one didn't came with it. So right now what I'm gonna do is get used oil and put it around the seal so it could seal good. Or you could put new new oil, it doesn't really matter. As long as you put oil, like lubricated right here around the seal. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and I'm gonna start tightening it. Start putting back the, I mean, start putting back the new oil filter. And remember, when tightening the oil filter, you have to tighten it with your hands, clockwise. But sometimes we might have a little bit of grease and we might not tighten it. And you don't want to have a loose oil filter and cause engine problems. So I always like to use this. This solvent, like this type of... It's not soap. I will... It's like a cleaner... And it has a good orange scent. So it's good because it's kind of like... It has like... It feels like sand, kind of. So it could remove all the oil. So this is a good thing I use. So I could dry up my hands and clean my hands. And also so I could tighten the filter better. Much better. So this is a good... Um, good thing to use as a hand cleaner so you could tighten the filter good because remember it's you do it with hand tight so you don't want to use gloves because you don't know if you're tightening it well so you don't want to have a loose oil filter so use this to tighten your so you could wash your hands and and put on the oil filter so you could tighten it better so now that I put a little bit of used oil around the seal like I said around it um, where is where is it gonna be screwed in? Make sure you line up the oil filter. You don't wanna cross thread it or put it crooked like this or like that. So make sure it goes all the, the way in. Just go gently like that. If you feel like there's resistance, uh, counter take it off. Go get go counterclockwise and try again. So so if it's not going in, make sure it goes in. Go gently so you could know like if it's actually meeting up in there. Like I say this these oil filters you don't have to over tighten it. You just go once with one hand with no tools or anything, just with one hand. And like I said, wash your hands completely, completely dry. So you won't have any greasy hands. Cause or else you're not able to tighten this, it's gonna be slipping and you say, Oh, I tightened it well and you didn't tighten it well, then you're gonna have oil leaks. Or you could mess up your engine. So make sure you clean you clean your hands and and tighten as much as you can with one hand like I'm doing. See it turned again, so if you have any doubts, keep drying your hands. Or if you touch the oil filter, make sure it's it's dry or clean it off with a cloth. 
so it won't be so greasy so make sure you clean you clean everything around it so you know that there's no oil leaks I like to clean it just to make sure I'm not fooled by these things like oh this might there might be an oil leak so just clean it a little bit as much as you can and clean the oil filter with a cloth or what a piece of paper or some napkin see I put that in there more because I cleaned it so just do as much as you can with one hand and you should be good now it's gonna be time to fill up the the oil put the oil back and then once we're done filling up the oil uh, turn on the vehicle and reset the oil lamp and do not lower down the vehicle until you know also after the resetting the lamp go under the vehicle and to check if there's no leaks because in case something happens you don't want to lower down the vehicle oh I got it done and you lower down the vehicle and then you have leaks because you didn't tighten it well or maybe you got distracted or something happened and you didn't you just decided oh I'm just going to lower down lower down the vehicle so make sure before you loosen down the vehicle make sure the drain bolt is not dripping or the oil filter because I I had a one incident the um I realized that one of the oil filters wasn't lining too well so I'm like hmm this must not be the oil filter the correct one and yeah it was the wrong one the auto parts store gave us our different one and it was dripping and good thing Good thing I had the vehicle lifted or else it would have been dripping more worse. It was dripping a lot, but it could have been a lot worse. So the client had to go back and buy um, new oil and new oil filter. So it's always good to match, like I said, match the oil filter. She, the person, the client did not want to... I told her, I don't think this oil filter is the correct one. She's like, no, I know they gave me the correct one. And I still put it on, but I felt like something went right. It wasn't right. And yeah, like, I know mechanics. I've been doing mechanics since I graduated from high school. It's been 10 years, more than 10 years. And I, I know what I'm doing. So it's always good, like, to match up every part that you buy in every auto parts store or else... You could have serious issues. So me, I always match up the every part that I buy from the auto parser. We all do mistakes. I'm not blaming the auto parser. We all do mistakes. So it's always good to make sure it's the same one. I know certain things, aftermarket things with, with stock, it looks different, a little bit different. But most of the time, it's all the same. It's just different design in a way. So yeah make sure that you match up the parts because you don't want to learn the hard way so like i said right now i'm just gonna be filling up the the oil okay now we're gonna do the oil change we're gonna fill it up you can see right there s a e o w 20 dex and this is the one i got the performance right here 0W20 DM approved gen 3 so uh, this one I'm gonna use mobile one and make sure the funnel you get your funnel ready make sure it's clean it doesn't have any debris make sure right here is clean you do your best to clean it so I'm gonna loosen it and we're gonna put the oil funnel right there so like I said I like I marked it this usually I believe like again like I said it's 4.2 quarts so you go on the left side on the bottom of this line it goes 4.2 quarts I believe so I usually fill it up right here under the line don't go more under 
in this one or I don't think it matters just a little bit so you'll be fine as long as you don't go all the way over here that's five quarts that's overfilling so make sure you just take your time and just throw little by little you have any doubts lift up the lift up of this like that so I could label it so you could see how much is going down so see the way you move it so the more you throw in there the more it starts to go down so just take your time this is five quarts so it's gonna keep going down the more I put in so if you have any doubt just stop and measure it see just measure it until you reach right here like I said it doesn't matter if you make it right here it's not that much so you'll be fine because I believe only one, one quart goes inside the oil filter so you'll be fine by the time it goes all the way down there up to the engine you should be fine so just don't go more don't go more than these lines so you should be okay so I'm gonna start filling it up little by little I'm gonna take my time and then I'm gonna show you how to reset the oil lamp as you can see I'm taking my time it's already going down it's already right there one more quart left and like I said I'm just gonna make it up to the whiteout I'm gonna take my time right here so no rush and once you start to get closer just make sure you put it you put the jug in the like on a flat surface so you can see how much you need see it's almost there just a little bit more and I should be done so if you have any doubt just put it on a flat surface so you can see right there just need a little bit more not that much also also I forgot to mention make sure you could save this jug for the for preference so when you do the next oil change you know where to mark it for your car for your vehicle so it's always good to keep a jug just to know where you have to do it so you won't forget or you could take a picture also so yeah just make sure you do it correctly so me I just saved this for reference and when it's time to do the next oil change I'll have this one ready so I could, once I buy the other one I just mark it the same way and it should be fine okay so now I'm gonna do the I'm gonna check the oil by the dipstick it's right on the mark I didn't overfill it so now we're gonna start the vehicle So you have to clean it and get dirty, clean it and check this off. Now I'm gonna reset the oil lamp. So now I'm gonna reset the oil lamp. So you start your vehicle. Remember, don't put it in gear because you have it lifted up. So we're gonna reset the oil lamp. So what you do is, you you move it right here. I mean, well you press this one because you have the hood open, so you press the check mark. And then you move from trip, you push the right hand side, the right arrow, right here. See, so you press the right, and then it says right here you check all the options the air filter and other oil pressure the tire pressure so we're gonna go to oil so you just scroll down in the arrow I mean so you scroll down to the bottom arrow and then it says right there remaining oil life so you you hold on to the check mark right here so you press it and hold it and it says if you want to reset it, yes. So hold hold the check mark. And it says, are you sure that you want to reset? And you move the, the up arrow that is pointing up. And then you press a check mark again and press yes. Now you have 100% remaining oil life. So now you reset the oil. Now you have new oil on your engine, on your vehicle. 
So next time that you're gonna do an oil change, just keep on. Usually I like to change the oil between 40 to 30%. So that's what I do. I change the oil between 40 to 30%. So just keep monitoring it until you reach. So I do it between, like I said, 30 to 40% of oil life. So my job is done. I'm gonna make sure that there's no oil leaks on the bottom. Since I already reset it, the, the oil. You can see there's no oil leaks. There's no oil leaks on the oil pan or on the filter. So it means that I did a good job. Oh, it's time to lower down the vehicle. Now I'm gonna lower down the vehicle. the jack stamp away from the vehicle so when you load it you won't damage anything so it's already done I already know there's no leaks on the oil don't forget to remove the wheel chuck so also don't forget to remove the rubber pad because sometimes it gets stuck so don't, you don't want to hit a bump of the road and then you lose this then you have to buy it all over again so don't forget this rubber pad so if you have any doubts uh, when to do the oil change this is where you could look at on the owner's manual so I check right here in the owner's manual it says right here 1.5 turbo liter and which one it needs it needs the SAE OW20 and also when is the next oil change it says right there Oil must be changed every 5,000 kilometers to 3,000 miles since the last oil change. Remember to set to reset the oil lamp system whenever the oil is changed. So basically what I showed you guys how to do. So right now I keep my records on the maintenance records. I, I do the date and when I did the oil change and I add on my calculator how much I have, how many miles I have right now and add it up to 3,000 miles or like or like I said or you could do it by the by the oil filter life to 30 percent or 40 percent that's what I do when that's when I do the oil change but if you want like I said you could just add what how many miles you have right now so let's say we have 3,000 miles you add up another 3,000 miles that's 6,000 miles so the next 6,000 miles you have to do another oil change so and then you put right here services perform oil and oil filter change so that's what I, this is how i do this is how i do it so just add up three thousand miles of how many miles you have in your vehicle and remember to reset your your lamp and just keep record on this i put it on my owner's manual so i won't forget and i'm always checking the oil filter life on my vehicle so I always scroll down on the menu and make sure that everything's okay that there's I will not go more miles without changing the oil so like I said I've been doing these videos so I could help you guys save more money I know the dealership charges you a lot to do to do a simple maintenance so try to save you guys a lot of money by doing these videos please like and subscribe always follow safety procedures when it comes to lifting a vehicle when it comes to lowering down the vehicle when it comes down to putting the right the right things in your car how to tighten it how not to over tighten it so how to fill up the oil so just keep just keep doing the same thing and the, just follow the owner's manual and you should be fine thanks for watching